Raptor Call of the Shadows video game review. There's really no story to this one. Basically, you're a fighter pilot and you gotta blow stuff up. I suppose that every single level is you being sent into enemy territory because literally everything you, you know, everything you see, pretty much you can blow up, you know, other than the ground itself, but any building, any ship, any aircraft, you know, sometimes even people. Yeah, I guess you just really got to hope with yourself that, you know, there are no, like, orphanages hidden in there, you know, or something. The game is, you know, basically, you control this, I don't know, F-16 fighter jet or something, Although it's quite, it's not a normal kind of F-16 fighter jet because you can literally strap just tons of weaponry onto it. Although you, most of it you have to, you know, select in order to use it. You can't use all of it at once. That would be overkill. Even though there's a lot of overkill in this game, that they didn't actually put in there. And I'm pretty sure that this fighter jet can also actually fly in space. Actually, I'm, I'm certain of it because there's at least one cinematic where you are flying away from something in outer space. And at least one level looks like the surface of the moon. So yeah, I, I'm not entirely clear on when this is supposed to be taking place, but yeah, just roll with it. It's worth it. But yeah, you control this fighter jet and you are you know, you start out at the bottom of the screen, and the screen scrolls, I guess, downwards. I've never been able to, like, you know, it stuff approaches you, and the screen moves, you know, upwards to get closer to it. And it only really stands still when you reach the final boss of a level. You know, other than that, you are always moving forward. Now, you can control the jet anywhere you want in the screen, you know, so you can fly all the way up to the the very top of the screen, but you'll of course risk, you know, flying straight into whatever is coming, you know, next from up there. The, you know, as you play, the, you know, the enemies will arrive from, you know, up in the screen. Some will also come in from the side, but almost all of them are coming from the top of the screen towards you. You have to destroy as many of them and as many of the buildings as you possibly can, because everything earns you cash. Everything you destroy will earn you cash, and this cash is used to buy more weapons. You can also find some of the weapons in the levels, but that is really not something you want to rely on. You want to buy more weapons, as well as you can repair your ship in these, you know, you have 100 health total, and you buy these 25, you know, increments of health, or, you know, energy for the ship. You can also buy, you know, shields, and there's this, it's called the Mega Bomb, but, you know, it's got the, you know, nuclear symbol on it, so, I don't know, maybe it is an actual, you know, small nuclear device or something. Other th and, and then you can buy this scanner, which will tell you how much health, it, it grants you this health bar for any boss enemy in the level, when you meet him. Other than that, everything you buy is a weapon, and there are a couple of them that are like, they're called always equipped, like a plasma thing and these micro missiles. And other than that, the only thing that you're always using is just your machine gun. And it's actually kind of interesting because the machine gun, I'm pretty sure, is the only weapon that the enemies never use. And at the same time, they have this, I don't know, fireball energy kind of, it's, it's this, these yellow balls. They only have that. You know, you never get to use that. The enemies, you know, one of the great things is that depending on the level of difficulty and depending on how far in the levels you are, the screen can literally pile up, literally just be jam-packed with enemies 
and or enemy fire. And, you know, you basically have to either have, you know, match their weaponry and just take them out as fast as you can. You are always, always, you know, in some kind of inferior position, basically. You know, they're, either you're up against a boss enemy who has more health and, you know, really strong weaponry. You may have stronger weaponry, but regardless, he will start out with more health than you have. You know, you can't afford to just face him head on. You're going to have to dodge a bunch of bullets. Or you're up against a ton of enemies. You know, you're outnumbered. You're outgunned. You know, you may be outgunned. You're usually outnumbered. And when you face enemies, you're boss enemies, you're out health barred. Yeah, something like that. And you don't actually have to destroy, you know, there's, I think the boss enemies are actually the only thing you are required to destroy. You will not pass a level without defeating the final boss. Not gonna happen. But other than that, you are not obligated to destroy. You know, if you wanted, you could just dodge. It doesn't have, like, I'm sounding like proportional response all of a sudden. You don't actually have to, you know, it, you know, you're not going to earn as much money if you don't destroy everything you get near, but you don't have to. It's not like you have this, you know, set goal, and if you don't meet that, you're not going to, you don't have a ratio, you, whatever. I think you know what I'm getting at. Quota, that's the word. But basically, either you can match them, or you're just going to have to dodge them. You know, because you you have to calculate that whatever you meet along the levels, you're going to fight a final boss. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to pwn you. If you don't, you know, if you don't have some health to spend, and you don't have maybe some mega bombs, some strong weaponry to get there, you know, you don't necessarily want to waste mega bombs on low level enemies, Unless, literally, the screen is full. Because it's actually kind of cool. It literally clears the screen. You know, it is the BFG, basically. But you're going to want to store some health. Because there are plenty of enemies in the levels that can actually take a healthy bite out of your health amount. And you're going to wish you had that when you face the boss. You know, unless you want to see your jet go up in just this massive, fiery explosion, which I can't fault you because it looks cool. All of the explosions in this game are just badass, you know, it is, it is a badass game. You know, you blow stuff up all over the place and everything has this, you know, there's, there's apparently fuel everywhere because everything explodes in these fireballs, you know, regardless of the building, regardless, you know, it makes sense for the, you know, enemy craft, but buildings, you know, even, you know, if you blow up like a wooden bridge, it's going to go up in just fiery flames of blasts, you know, and yeah, the weaponry, you know, there's a nice selection, and there are a couple of weapons, unfortunately, that are arguably not really worth getting. But on the whole, almost all of the weapons are good for some situation. And that's really cool, because there's like a dozen of them, or maybe a dozen and a half. And they really are all, you know, they're different enough that you're going to remember them, you know. I can stand here and describe all of them, but I'm not going to waste your time. But basically, you know, I'm just, quick examples, you got a laser that targets, you know, other aircraft, you've got a machine gun that targets both aircraft and, you know, on the ground kind of stuff, you've got missiles, you've got lasers that just go straight ahead, and yeah, you know, there's, that is about it for the different types of weaponry, but, you know, 
And of course, you know, the more expensive, the more powerful, but not, excuse me, not always necessarily, excuse me, not always necessarily more useful. You know, sometimes you'll be fighting, because one thing is, like, the very most powerful weapon is two lasers that are extremely, it's, they're extremely powerful, and they fire quite rapidly. A lot of enemies will be taken out by just one blast of this thing, and because there's two blasts, if, you know, two enemies are close enough to each other, you can take out both of them with this one shot. That's quite effective, but when you're facing an enemy, you might want to also have the, you know, the self-aiming laser. Because you can be flying all the way around him, and he's going to be flying around on the screen, you know, on this one... You know, again, you have the one screen, and it's now standing still. He, he might fly all the way at the top of the screen, and you can't fly behind him. Or he might fly at the very bottom of the screen, and you're going to have to be off to the side or up above him or something, you know. That's the great thing. You're never standing still in this game. You, you're, you don't want to be standing still in this game. Not ever. You know, it's very much the FPS logic, you know. Do not stand still. The enemies are very nicely varied and well designed, you know. The basic weapon setup of them, you know, typically each enemy will have one, maybe two weapons, except for boss enemies who maybe have like three, maybe four. That's it, you know. You, you know, you, you can carry far more weapons than they do, can. But. And, and, you know, again, it doesn't change that much over the course. You know, basically they use these fireballs, they use missiles, they use plasma, and some use laser. That's about it. You know, that's, that's what you're going to face as far as their weaponry. But there are so many cool designs, and, you know, they'll move in different ways. And, you know, you'll, you'll face these large bombing craft, you'll face tanks, you'll face submarines that are like, you know, just just above the surface of the water, you know, there are gun emplacements also. One interesting thing about the fireballs is that while some enemies just fire straight ahead with them, this is the one weapon that tends to actually have, a, you know, the enemies tend to have a bit of an aiming capability with it. So basically, regardless of where you are on the screen, there might be an enemy who's aiming straight at you. And I think this is why they didn't, you know, implement machine guns, because machine gun, you know, basically every projectile in the game is just, it's sort of one projectile, so, you know, or maybe a, a little batch, like four missiles. And you can dodge those, but a machine gun, you kind of, you know, that's a bit more iffy. But regardless of where you are on the screen, there might be an enemy who is shooting straight at you with these, mind you, slow-moving balls of fire or whatever it is. And that's actually, and, and you're going to have to dodge that, but in dodging that, you might accidentally fly straight into another aircraft because some of them move really fast. That's also something that's really nice. Some of them move fast, some of them move slow. Some of them move just straight down the screen and, you know, some of them sort of try to... I don't know, I guess not a lot of them really try to dodge you. Basically, they have a set pattern of movement, but it is still interesting. And even if you you know, even if you're very focused, even if you know their pattern of movement, it's still gonna challenge you to actually be dodging them or shooting them, you know, because they might be flying sort of erratically, and even though you know how they're gonna move, you still have to really try to match their movement or, you know, be using a, a self-aiming weapon or something like that. And the trick to the self-aiming weapons is you don't choose what they aim for. You know, you can't tell it, okay, now aim to the left of me or aim to the right of me or something. No, it's not going to work like that. It's just going to aim wherever, you know. Which also makes the aiming machine gun, you know, not only is it weaker than the laser, but it's also, you can't really tell it, okay, now aim for the ground or now aim for, you know, the air. So, yeah. 
you also get to go to a number of different locations and that really helps because you know basically it is kind of static in the way that you know like I said it's always just you're moving upwards towards something and enemies are coming down towards you so really you know mixing it up with what types of buildings you're gonna face and is there water how much water is there which isn't really gonna affect you directly but you know there might be submarines in there and it's just it's a nice visual change you know some you know okay more ground ground okay we get it ground but you know you've got barren lands you've got woods you know you've got genuine enemy facilities really you know where you can really tell where there's stuff built everywhere you know and like I said the, the moon I'm pretty sure it's a moon you know it's got craters it's grayer gray yeah there are technically four difficulty settings but really the very first one I think you're gonna get to play like four levels out of any of the three um, sectors I think it's called when in reality they have like I don't know ten levels each you know yeah it's not that long of a game one level is you know it can take you I don't know five or ten minutes I've never really looked because I've always been too into the game but it's not that long of a game but it's fun because you're not forced to really do anything specific other than just you know take out the end boss so you know you can play through a bunch of levels and try to just dodge stuff and just save up and buy the most powerful weapon first or you can you know buy the weapons as you go along you know cheapest to most expensive or you know things like that so you know you you have a fair bit of freedom and with there being these really three difficulty settings I'd say the game's gonna challenge pretty much everyone you know the very easiest level <sighs> players that aren't that experienced are still gonna at least be able to get a nice bit of the way there you know it is a game that takes you know just monstrous you know reflexes reaction speeds hand-eye coordination you know the works you know it is one of these games you know this is from the 90s don't remember the exact year back then games at least some of them were made to challenge you you know so it does that but yeah on the two upper difficulty settings it gets really tough and yeah even people who you know consider themselves excellent players of video games the very highest difficulty setting is gonna challenge you you know and I think it's pretty cool that no matter how experienced you are this game is pretty sure to challenge you you know and there's of course some people won't be able to you know really play it at all but again you know you gotta set a certain level and the very easiest difficulty setting you could use that to practice, you know, if you really want to try to play the rest of the game. You can play that as often as you like, you know. And once you've completed the game, you actually get to choose. You, know, you can play the levels over again, you know. If you've just, only just now had money for this one weapon, you got to test it out. Just, you know, go back, f click Fly Mission, and you can play... You know, any level, there's really no limit to how often and for how long you can play this game. You can just, you know, go back and not really start over, literally, but, you know, play the very first level again. Once you've completed a wave, it just resets to the point where, you know, and not your money, nor your weaponry. Just, you know, you can play that entire sector again from the first wave. And, yeah... And I also believe, and I, I don't remember this with certainty, but I do believe that if you play a couple of waves of, let's say, the first sector, and then you want to try the second sector, and you play a couple of levels of that, you return to the first sector, it's going to pick up where you got to, you know. Also, you can save in between levels, you know, as often as you like, although do remember it's not necessarily a good thing, especially on the higher difficulties, to save after each level, because you might you know, 
get hit too often and use too many of the phase shields, I think they're called, and not have enough money for enough phase shields to get through the next level, and yeah. You know, save with caution. But yeah, great game. You know, just, you want five or ten minutes of just rampant destruction, or heck, a couple of hours of rampant destruction of property and, you know, yeah, that's, this is your game, you know. That was an orphanage, wasn't it? Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.